Hey there, welcome back to the channel. My name is Andrew Clark, and today we are gonna be taking a second look at the Joyo American Sound. So about a month ago, I made a video comparing the American Sound to my Universal Audio Dream 65. And while a head-to-head -head video can be very helpful for some people, I feel like the American Sound definitely deserves its own video where we can kind of talk about the other things that this pedal can do. So in this video, I'm gonna be starting off by giving you a general overview of the pedal as well as going over all the features. From there, we'll be diving into the knobs and sounds that this pedal can make on its own. After that, we'll plug in my pedal board and listen to how this thing sounds in a more practical setting like gigging or recording. And then finally, we'll talk about who the American Sound is really for. Okay, so first things first, let's talk about what this pedal is and what it can and can't do. So basically, the American Sound is an amp simulator pedal. And that's what makes it similar to something like the Strymon Iridium or the Universal Audio Dream 65. But honestly, that's kind of where the similarities end. A big difference between the American Sound and a lot of the other amp simulators out there is that the Joyo stuff is actually analog, where most of your other options are going to be digital. Now, we don't really need to get into the whole analog versus digital thing. Honestly, when it comes to amp simulators like this, you're not really gonna notice a quality difference between one or the other. One's probably not gonna sound digital or sound more analog. But I do think it's important to note that this thing is an actual circuit designed to sound like an amp. Well, a lot of the other amp sims out there are relying on DSP and algorithms to kind of digitally create the sound and feel of a real amplifier. So when I made my other video on this pedal, a lot of you guys were asking, does the Joyo need a cab simulator or can I run it into IRs? And one of the pros and cons of this pedal is that it actually does have a built-in cabinet simulator. So you do not want to be using any external IRs or cab simulations, but unfortunately you cannot bypass it. So what you've got is what you've got. You really can't do anything about that. However, it is kind of nice that for $40, you are getting an amplifier and a cabinet and you don't need to buy anything else. I've seen a few people mention that you can actually have this pedal modded to bypass the cabinet simulator. So if you really wanna get crazy and start using different IRs and things like that, that is an option. So as far as using this thing in a live situation, you are going to need to plug it into a DI box. So if you're used to playing with an amp, it's a little bit weird. It's a lot like an electric piano where you don't have an amplifier behind you or anything like that. And you'll need to have your guitar come through whatever monitoring system you're using. So the sound engineer can either send it to the wedges in front of you or into your in-ears. This is something that can take a little bit of getting used to. I would say if you're on in-ears, it's really not a big deal you're not gonna notice a huge difference from having an amp behind you, but only having your guitar come through wedges without an amp behind you is a little bit of a weird feeling and it does take some getting used to. For home recording and playing, you can plug straight into your audio interface. Most audio interfaces have a direct in. So in some cases, you don't even really need a DI box. If you wanna just use this thing for practicing at home or whatever, you can plug headphones directly into it as long as you have an adapter. Uh, otherwise, you're only gonna get one side of the headphones coming through. You also need to make sure that your headphones aren't super high impedance because this thing is not super loud. It might have a hard time driving some higher end headphones, uh, but most headphones, it should have no problem. Another thing that I didn't mention in my last video, but is pretty important, is that this thing is not really trying to do the 60s blackface Fender deluxe reverb sound. It's actually designed to sound more tweety. So while you can play around with the EQ and kind of scoop out the mids and get it to sound a little closer to something like the Universal Audio Dream 65, this thing really does shine when it is getting more into tweed territory. If you like what you hear in this video, I put an Amazon affiliate link down in the description so you can pick up a Joyo American Sound for yourself, which also does help support the channel. Okay, with all that said, I'm gonna grab my guitar and we are gonna dive into the pedal. Okay, so this is what we're gonna be working with today. Uh, we're gonna have every single thing on the pedal board bypass as we're going through the knobs and sounds on the Joyo. And the Joyo is going directly into the Universal Audio Apollo. There will be absolutely no compression, no EQ, nothing else, no fancy stuff uh, going on in the background. So this really is the pedal, a cable, right into the audio interface is all that you are hearing. I'll also be using my Sir Classic Antique S guitar. We'll start off with everything straight up and down on the American Sound. Uh, not really a realistic setting, but this is a good starting point. It sounds like this. Okay, so before we get into the EQ, I wanna clean it up a little bit. Uh, I think most people are gonna use this on the cleaner side, running overdrives and things into it like that. Uh, so we'll bring the drive back. Uh, I can actually, I can give you a rundown of the drive first. Let's do that. Thank you. 
So the drive has a very significant effect on the overall volume. Uh, if you've watched my last video, I did something very similar to this where I went through all the settings. So I'm gonna try and go through this a little bit quicker. If you wanna see it more in depth, make sure you go over to that other video. I'll make sure to link it down below. Uh, so for this, let's set the drive about here. <laughs> Uh, it's a very dark sounding pedal when everything's straight up and down. Uh, so let's go on to the voice. This is something that affects the drive a lot. We'll listen to some interaction between the voice and drive. We'll bring the level down. Like I said, I'm gonna be constantly changing the level uh, just to compensate for the other settings. <laughs> So there's some pretty major interaction there. Uh, it's changing some stuff with the EQ. It's changing the character of the drive itself. Uh, and it's also changing the feel a little bit. So it's kind of hard. It probably won't come across really well uh, through YouTube or through video, uh, but you'd kind of have to play around with it yourself to kind of find that sweet spot. Uh, for the cleaner side, I like to keep the drive down. I bring the voice up just a little bit, uh, but somewhere around there is usually where I like it. Level, we're not gonna talk about too much because you're just kind of doing level to taste. When the pedal is set cleaner and you've got the drive down, uh, and the mids actually affect the volume too, but when you've got the drive down, uh, you kind of need to crank the level up to make sure you've got enough output. But as you bring the drive up, you bring the voice up, obviously the pedal gets a lot louder. So very different from the Universal Audio Dream where as you increase the volume, the actual output of the pedal really doesn't change at all, so you don't need to compensate. From here, let's take a look at the EQ. So first up, we've got the lows. Then next we've got the mids. And then lastly, we've got the highs.
Okay, so if you wanna run this thing as a clean pedal platform, you have a pedal board you wanna run it into, uh, or just a series of pedals that you wanna use with it, uh, then I kinda recommend obviously not having the gain and the voice up too high. It doesn't play that well with pedals. This pedal in general, I don't know if it's because it is analog or whatever, it does deal with pedals very differently than a lot of the other options out there. Uh, if you're not careful, it can sound a little bit harsh. So what I like to do is obviously I like to bring the mids down. I feel like naturally this pedal, uh, when everything is at noon, it is just too mid forward to sound good with other pedals. So I'm just gonna move the knobs around and just show you some other tones that this thing can get. Okay, so obviously a lot of sounds you can get out of this pedal. Uh, if you're at home jamming or you're in the studio or something, maybe you wanna get a more driven tone from this thing. Uh, but for most guitar players nowadays, they're using a lot of pedals, they're using overdrives to get a lot of their distorted and overdriven sounds. So that means we wanna set it up a little bit on the cleaner side. If this thing is set up pretty gainy and you hit it with overdrives or fuzzes or other pedals, uh, things fall apart pretty quickly. So uh, this is kind of closer to the settings that I would use personally. Uh, if I were setting this thing up. So, uh, bring the highs up a little bit. Mids, we'll run the mids a little higher than we did uh, for the dream comparison. Uh, again, it's not gonna sound very black facey, but it still will sound good. Uh, drive, nothing crazy, let's listen here. So that sounds pretty good to me. Now we're gonna start adding pedals. So the uh, Cali 76, a compressor, is something that I like to have on all the time, especially with a Strat or a Tele, something with single coils. That compressor makes a big difference. And then always some spring reverb. You need to have something to kind of moisten things up. Uh, it just never sounds good completely dry. Uh, so now we've got this. Again, without these things on. A really big thing, and I've mentioned this before in other videos, uh, with an amp simulator pedal, I really recommend finding a good compressor. Uh, the one from Wampler is amazing, the Ego compressor. I think Jackson Audio makes a really cool one as well. I love the Cali 76, it's a bit expensive. Um, but anything with a blend control, you just wanna be able to blend some of that clean tone back into their uncompressed tone. Uh, so you kind of retain some of the dynamic, but then also get some of the squish. And then all of a sudden, a pedal like this is gonna feel a lot more like an amp. This might not translate super well when you're listening to it, uh, but as far as feel goes, the compressor makes a massive difference. Okay, so from here, I'm just gonna stack a few things on top. Uh, I might tweak some of the knobs, and I'm just gonna kind of show you some of the sounds that you can get out of this thing.
Okay, so that's gonna be it for sounds. Now the last thing I wanna talk about is just who exactly is this pedal for? I think the fact that this thing is just $40 kind of makes it a no-brainer for so many different types of guitar players. I think the first thing that comes to mind is the type of person who is going to be bringing an amp to every gig that they play. Now there's a reason so many pros, even that use high-end amps, always bring back up amps. Because the reality is that tube amps, they do fail sometimes. So if it's not realistic for you to go out and bring a second big amp to a gig, you throw this thing in your backpack, again, it's $40, and you take it to a gig, as long as the venue or the sound guy has an extra DI box, uh, if anything goes wrong, anything goes down, you have this in your back pocket, you pull it out, you can go direct and you're good to go. This has been for me my number one use case. It's just that little extra peace of mind, just knowing that if anything goes wrong, you always have a solution that can go a really long way. If you're a guitar player that plays at church or somewhere else where you cannot have a loud amp on stage with you, then making sure you have something like this where you can have complete silence on the stage, it's a total game changer. On top of that, if you're not sure you wanna spend hundreds of dollars on a specific modeling pedal, then this can be a great entry point for you. And then the last type of person that I think this thing is great for is an at-home player or a beginner or a hobbyist or someone who's kind of just getting into playing guitar. Nowadays, it seems like amps are less and less popular. And if you live in an apartment building or you have neighbors and you have thin walls, uh, they're not really gonna like that you have an amplifier cranked up, especially if you wanna play early in the morning or late at night. So something like this, you can plug headphones into it. Uh, you can plug it into an audio interface and listen through your computer. You can record with it. You can gig with it. You can practice practice with it. You can kind of do everything with it. And especially if you're not sure exactly what you're going to be doing with your guitar playing, it's just kind of the perfect first amp for a lot of people out there. And if you want to talk about how this thing holds up in 2022, now that we've got all these fancy new expensive digital amp simulators, I think it's fair to say that it really does hold its own. As long as you're not trying to exactly emulate something else out there and you're really just kind of letting the pedal do its thing and what it's good at, then I honestly think this can be a lifelong amp solution for just about any guitar guitar player. In my opinion, for just $40, it's kind of a no-brainer to just have one of these in your arsenal. No matter what kind of player you are, you're probably going to find a use for it. And on top of that, this is only one pedal in their line of amp in a box pedals. So if you're more of a Marshall guy or a Vox guy, they do have versions of those as well. So I'd like to know what you think. How do you feel the Joyo American Sound holds up against the current competition in 2022? Make sure you leave your answer in the comments below. That's going to be it for this video. If you enjoyed it, please make sure you give it a thumbs up. Please also consider subscribing to the channel for more weekly guitar content. And if you're interested in picking up a Joyo American Sound for yourself, I have added an affiliate link down in the description below. And if you buy using that, you'll help support the channel. With all that said, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.